Hello, I'm Roger Bisbee from the Skill Builder channel. I'm joined by Daniel Cox, who is a regular contributor to Skill Builder, and he is a renowned clampaholic. He's actually a member of Clampaholics Anonymous. He's taking one day at a time. He's trying to get over it. You know, he's got more clamps than anybody else I know. When we were asked by a viewer, if we could do a rundown on clamps, I thought, who better to do it than Dan? Because if Daniel doesn't know a thing or two about clamps, then nobody does. You've got a fair selection yep. here, I've got to say. Uh, I'm getting a grip on it, <laughs> finally. <laughs> so the first clamp up is a good old traditional G clamp. So these have been around for many, many years. It's a really good clamp, very strong. The only thing, you've got a lot of winding up when you want to actually clamp some wood together. The beauty of these, where you've got the thread, you can really give it a nice bit of tightening. Traditional G cramp, and there's a nice little baby <laughs> one there for more joinery stuff. I don't think you'd be doing too much big with that. The other disadvantage of that, I'd say, is it, it's very easy to mark the wood with it, isn't it? Exactly. We've got metal here compared to the nice rubber pads on most of these. Now, you could put a bit of hardball there to protect your piece, but you know, nowadays with the rubber clamps, you just want to get it on there and squeeze it, but these are really good. Next up are the squeezy clamps. Good old one hand operation on the clutch system there. This has only got two plates. These ones have only got like, you know, no, these have probably just got the one plate in there. The trouble that I find with these smaller ones is when you're cramping up, you hit that dead spot and that's as tight as it's gonna go. Where with a G cramp, you can really give it some welly. Now, as you might have seen recently, I bought this one at the DM show. I'm a bit of a Bessie fan. This has got about five plates I can just see up in there. So I've only been using it a few weeks, but when you when I'm squeezing that, it really is a solid clamp. So so far, I'm much more impressed with these than like the little like the Irwin ones. These are not bad, but it just gets that dead point, and they're not very good really. There's a few different types of these on the market as well. There's another one here which is quite good because you can slide that end along as well, and then you can move it up. So it's another alternative to that one. And then there's another stranger squeezy clamp here. This is from Axmink stuff. And this is a strange one because you sort of slide that up to the, the workpiece and then you, you lift that up there. I've never really got on with this one, to be quite honest. Yeah, and it, it all seems a little bit backwards to me. I'm not sure if they still make it. It's quite a few years old. Mm. I was looking to, for another idea with it. But you lift it up. It's quite a solid clamp. You've got a bit of a ratchet system in there going, so it's good. Yeah. Yeah. But there's a better ratchet system clamp, which we'll look at in a moment. What these are really good for is, so, oh, when we're doing like a kitchen end unit there, we've got a bit of a base unit set up there, you can pull it on and squeeze it. Now, again, I've been using this Bessie one this week, and once you put it there and squeeze it, that's holding it in nice and solid. It's pulling it in together where I found with, like, some of the Irwin ones, I've had them on a square as what I've thought, but when you squeezed it up, it's actually slid the end panel back a little bit. It's not oh. quite, like it's not where I wanted it, it's, it's moved. But again, the Bessie one, it's been really good. Because quite often when you're drilling through them, your drill comes out the other side, you want them as solid. You don't want no timber breaking out the back of the carcass, getting between that and your end panel, the screw going through, it's just, you want it as tight as you can. So I'm <coughs> very happy with the Bessie one. So you can put it there and you can spread stuff about as it's going down, it will, push stuff apart. So if you've got a really big one of those, it'd be good for door linings and so on. Yes, you, you could, could yeah, it's, it's, squeeze the door lining out when yes. you're foaming up. Yeah. yeah, you could put it in there just to give it yeah. a little bit more. So this is all the one-handed trigger or squeezy clamps. Here we have some slide bar clamps. You can really get some pressure on them and wind them up. The only thing I've found with some of mine, the, the grooves on the bottom have worn. So when you're tightening, these have a tendency to slide back. So I've drilled a load of holes in there and, we end up putting a pass load now in there. This is a really old one and the grooves are still there. Much heavier, probably better well made many years ago. And then we've got the ratchet ones. Now these are really good, where it just ratchets down. You can get a lot of pressure on them and they lock in nicely. But again, it's normally a two-handed operation with these. It's not as quick as a squeezy clamp, but you've got much better power on them. Here we have the F-clamp. So these are for the track saws, and they simply slide in now. Now, I've got these ones, the ratchet system, which also goes in there, and if you can afford it, they are much better. They're just so much nicer to work with, just pull it under there, one hand operation, and you're straight in. These are Bessie. They're Bessie, okay. These ones are Festool. The Bessie ones are much cheaper, and I've heard that Bessie make them for Festool, whether that's true or oh, not, right. I don't know. If I was doing the door and it was a few hundred quid, 
I would you don't want any movement I would clamp it down definitely. Whereas at 99% of the time, with the guide rails, you can lay that on something. It's got that, that rubber grip on the back. It doesn't move. And it doesn't slide about. I guess if you've got dust under that guide rail, it would slide yeah, about a bit. If, if it's a really important cut and you don't want the, the guide moving, then definitely. The other good advantage with these, if you've got like an MF table and you've got your 25 mil holes, you can poke them oh, okay. down through there. You can put your workpiece in there. Ah. Slide them down. Oh, I've never thought of doing that. That's quite good. So I've got that. The other thing I sometimes do with these is I'll cramp material to my mitre saw on the fence of it. So you can get these in some nice places sometimes. You can just cramp it there as a stopper when I'm doing various bits like stair sticks and stuff at various times. Leave them in my box nearly all the time. It's nice and small and really useful for 90% of my little clamping up work that I do. Here we have the floor clamp. These are great. So when you're doing joists and you've got the old flooring in the olden days or nowadays, uh, eight before sheets, that goes onto the joist. And then if you've got your floor in there, and you can just wind that up and that really gives it some power. So for nowadays, the eight by two sheets of chipboard, you can really give that some power. Get a longer length of timber there just to protect the edge and you can give it some proper welly. These round the back here, as you can see, they bite into the joist. Yeah. And then the more they bite in, the more power it's got. Yeah. They'll can right. exactly that right. with teeth on it. As you can see them there. Yeah. So they're, quick, that's a quick release. Quick are release. they sprung, those or what? Yeah, sprung, sprung loaded. Yeah. These are about, I think, about 80 to 100 quid. Oh. Um, but we got a couple, a guy seen them at a boot fair for about 10 or something. And there we have the sash cramps. So these are the long ones for doing up sashes and a lot more joinery, bigger stuff. You've got pieces in the middle for your workpiece to sit on. And then you obviously just wind these up depending on how long you want them. This one, these ends with my dad's, as you can see, you can have these as long as you want. You just take them out, bit of tile batten off site, and there you have whatever sash cramp you want. And again, just tighten them up there. So can you still buy those? I, I believe you can still buy them, and I asked him the other day, and these ones are about 57 years old, he reckons, and I leave them in my van now, because I, I leave the timber in, but it's got me out of travel sometimes when you want a real long cramp, just a little nip it up, bit of batten, two holes, and you're there, so they're really handy. And then there's this really old monster, I'm not sure where this one come from. Whoa. It's a proper heavy old it's like sash a bit of cramp. railway line. I'm gonna run it into the scrapyard when I'll get skin <laughs> the weight of it. So what's good about these ones, they slide nice considering how old they are, but you just put the wedge in there, it grips on the teeth. And that's it solid. So it's a very quick and easy way back then of um, adjusting it. I think it could do with a little bit of TLC on this one and uh, a bit of oil. WD-40, mate. WD-40. So just a few other things with Bessie. It has got an Allen key fitting in the end of the handle there. So you can, if you get it tightened up and you can't do it no more, you can put an Allen key in there and then you can tighten it. I have seen some other clamps where this handle, it is cranked. You can crank the actual handle and then turn it around as well. But these are good where obviously both of these are quick, quick sliding. These teeth, you don't want too much glue in there, else it won't lock in very well. And also when you're gluing up, these rubber pads are great because the glue, it does peel off these quite easily. So what's that made of, that rubber? Um, these are like a non-stick Teflon, like rubbery thing. The glue don't really stick. I'm not sure, Roger, I don't subscribe to the old Rubber Weekly anymore, so I'm out of the loop. <laughs> What is the Daniel Cox recommendation for clamps? The favourite clamps at the moment? Um, right, they're both Bessie, and I must say I bought all these clamps. They're not paying me to say nice things. I like this little F clamp quite a lot because again, it's got a lot of power in it. Once you get it by it in, it's back to one, one hand operation. Nice and small goes in the box. I'll leave a couple of them in my box nearly all the time. And then this one that I bought the other week when we filmed at DM, I've only used it since then, but so far, that squeezy clamp, it's really pulling it's a punch. So, so is that a lot better than the It Irwin, just feels then? so much it, better than to me. Because you said the Irwin one, it, it kind of gets to where it gets it to, gets and it to won't go anymore. It gets to a certain point, and it seems to stop, where but, this one, it just seems to really give it that little bit more. Okay. So, but it does look like there's about, there's four plates in there, and some of the others have only got two plates in, like a clutch, I believe they call it. Again, it depends, I suppose, on what job you're doing and so Exactly. On. I mean, if you're doing some big construction stuff and you really want to tighten it up, because the last thing you'd want to do is like get a big ridge up there and it falls over and hits the camera. <laughs> Thank you very much That's indeed great. for that. Thank you, Roger. Don't forget, Dan's got his square up on the wall. What's it like? It's great. Yep, it's there. <laughs>